Hi, this is Lenny Banadez, and I am here to introduce Romeo and Juliet for the Shakespeare 2020 project. Uh, I am the artistic director of Titan Theatre Company in New York City and Hope Repertory Theatre in Holland, Michigan as well. Both companies do Shakespeare, and I am honored to be able to introduce uh, one of Shakespeare's most popular plays. Um, it was one of the most popular plays um, that he wrote when he was alive, uh, that along with Hamlet, and those two uh, continue to be two of his most popular plays today. Um, one of the reasons I think it is, you know, continues to, to be thriving um, is the fact that it is, um, it's aging very well. Um, some of his plays haven't done that, um, and yet this one, um, because it does deal with uh, love, I believe it is, um, it's doing quite well and it is a nice easy trans or translation or translatable into a modern setting and a modern ear because the one kind of thing we've all have held on to uh, for all these hundreds of years is love. Um, a lot of people call it the greatest love story ever told. Um, I would throw up an argument to that. Um, I think that, you know, the greatest love story ever told could be a play or a story that maybe ends happily. Um, but I would say that this play is probably one of the most passionate plays ever told. Um, a love story wrapped in a world of violence, in a world of um, absentee parents and irresponsible adult supervision. Um, both the Capulet and Matthew parents are just not really in charge of their uh, of the young people in their in their lives, and you have the nurse and the friar who, rather being than being the voice of reason, get caught up in the passion themselves, and so you have this lack of adult supervision that from the very beginning we see not just with Romeo and Juliet but with um, the young folks uh, that are fighting in the streets with Tybalt and um, and his crew and uh, Benvolio and Mercutio as well. Um, we see all these great characters that are kind of just letting loose on each other. Um, so they're this extremely violent world, and every time I've had the opportunity to direct this piece or work on this piece as an actor, um, I'm always drawn to the world that we place the romance in. Um, and I've always felt that if you can highlight the danger um, and the kind of... Um, dramaturgical stakes of the world they're living in, um, you're going to get even more power that comes out of that passionate relationship. That passionate relationship that need not end uh, the way it does. And that's what's really interesting and that's what's really heartbreaking about it is that um, it doesn't have to end like that. And that's what I think is so great about the play is that the ending is something that doesn't have to be. If someone were just to say, uh, everybody take a breath and let's just slow down. Um, you know, uh, that young love and young passion when we think it's life or death if we can't be with this person at 14 and 16 years old. Um, you know, broken hearts heal, um, but we need somebody to help us get through that. That's a hard thing to get through by yourself. Um, and at that age, um, you can't expect them to do that. So for me, I've always focused on how to highlight the romance by highlighting these other aspects of their situation. And that's why I think it's such a great and complex play um, and how it is, you know, lending itself to modern productions and movies that work so well. The Baz Luhrmann uh, movie, you know, whether you like the cut of the script or the screenplay or not, you, you have to admit it's a very strong artistic choice and it sticks with you. Um, and if you like Leo or Claire or not, um, and the acting, there is an, am an amazing uh, storytelling element and stylized element to it. And R&J really lends itself to it, uh, to that. Um, Every time I've directed it, we've done something kind of, you know, hip and edgy because young people um, and the way they, they, they act out or behave when tensions are high or love is high or they're unsupervised um, in a negative way. Not the kind of freedom that you want when you're young, but in the way where you just have absentee family. Um, it's always been very interesting to me. Um, you know, it's... Introducing R&J is kind of an easy thing because we all know it so well, so I don't have to go through the history really or the story because it's this there. Um, 
but it is some of the greatest words ever written. Um, you know, the balcony scene and then the journeys of Romeo and Juliet in particular between Act 1 and Act 2, and Juliet specifically for me. Um, her growth from Act 1 to Act 2 is phenomenal. It's almost two different plays. It's, uh, you know, it's one of the, the coolest characters you can play because in, you know, what we would call our Act 1 um, in terms of how we structure, you know, our two-act system um, in modern uh, productions with the, where you place the intermission, usually after the deaths of Tybalt and Mercutio. So that intermission is when you can clear the bodies off the stage. Um, but her transformation from a young, kind of caught up in love, uh, young woman to a passionate, strong, take control um, adult where she's dealing with um, the loss and the sadness of, of Romeo being banished or banished um, is a very, very challenging and unique thing to have that growth happen all within, you know, two hours traffic of our stage. So um, it's a beautiful play. Uh, we're very lucky it exists, um, and we're very, or I'm very lucky to be able to have been a part of it um, many times as an actor and, and quite a few as a director, and may it continue to thrive um, because stories like this uh, need to be told. It's a beautiful, beautiful play, and with that, um, I'd like to thank you for your time, and uh, enjoy Romeo and Juliet. Bye.